So the second thing that we see here is we see Scrooge then buying a turkey for the Cratchits. Um, so he's speaking to this lad out on the streets. Eh? returned the boy with all his might of wonder. What's today, my fine fellow? said Scrooge. Today? replied the boy. Why, Christmas Day? It's Christmas Day, said Scrooge to himself. I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. They can do anything they like. Of course they can. Of course they can. Hello, my fine fellow. Hello, returned the boy. Do you know the poulterers in the next street but one at the corner? Scrooge inquired. I should hope I did, replied the lad. An intelligent boy, said Scrooge. A remarkable boy. Do you know whether they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging up there? Not the little prize turkey, the big one. What, the one as big as me? returned the boy. What a delightful boy, said Scrooge. It's a pleasure to talk to him. Yes, my buck. It's hanging there now, replied the boy. Is it? said Scrooge. Go and buy it. Walker, exclaimed the boy. No, no, said Scrooge. I am in earnest. Go and buy it and tell him to bring it here, that I may give them the direction where to take it. Come back with the man and I'll give you a shilling. Come back with him in less than five minutes and I'll give you half a crown. The boy was off like a shot. He must have had a steady hand at the trigger who could have got a shot off half so fast. Now here what Dickens is encouraging us to do all the way through stage five is um, we, he wants us to compare Scrooge to the rest of the novella. He really wants to highlight how he's changed. The setting of Christmas Day is really significant because this um, echoes this kind of birth of Jesus and um, which reflects the kind of rebirth of Scrooge and this importance of Christmas as a time for redemption. We see Scrooge so differently um, in the way he describes the boy, intelligent, remarkable, delightful. And if we compare this to page three where no children want to speak to him, the quotation there, no children um, asked him, shows that no one wants to talk to him and he's scared everybody off with how intimidating he was, whereas now he's really engaging in conversation and also then engaging in life. He tips the boy for helping him out, which again is a sense and um, symbolizes his generosity. Um, and we can see that where he says that he'll give him half a crown um, if he returns quickly. I'll send it to Bob Cratchit's, whispered Scrooge, rubbing his hands and splitting with a laugh. He shan't know who sends it. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. Joe ne Miller never made such a joke as sending it to Bob's will be. The hand in which he wrote the address was not a steady one, but write it he did. Somehow and there, waiting his arrival, the knocker caught his eye. I shall love it as long as I live, cried Scrooge, putting it with his hand. I scarcely ever looked at it before. What an honest expression it has in its face. It's a wonderful knocker. Here's the turkey. Hello, whoop, how are you? Merry Christmas. It was a turkey. He never could have stood upon his legs, that bird. He would have snapped him off short in a minute, like sticks of sealing wax. Why, it's impossible to carry that to Camden Town, said Scrooge. You must have a cab. The chuckle with which he said this, and the chuckle with which he paid for the turkey, and the chuckle which with, which with which he paid for the cab, and the chuckle with which he recompensed the boy, were only to be exceeded by the chuckle of which he sat down breathless in his chair again, and chuckled till he cried. So here we see Scrooge making up for the past. Um, he's got joy in giving to others. He's rubbing his hands and laughing about the kind of joke that he's going to play on um, Bob by just turning up with this turkey. Um, so we see that importance of giving being something that um, you can take pleasure in. Then he notices the knocker, um, and this is important because it's symbolic of the first part um, of the story um, and again helps to show his change. He's now grateful for the knocker rather than scared. And remember, this knocker is important because that's where he first saw um, Marley's face. And he admits that he scarcely ever looked at it before, but now he's noticing his surroundings. It shows us that he's seeing the world differently. And then finally, um, in this um, last paragraph here in the bit we've just read, we've got the repetition of the word paid, um, and the verb and the chuckle, um, the noun, that's what we call that thing, um, both demonstrate his transformation and his joy and also his generosity um, coming through there. So draw a line because we're moving on to the next sec um, section. Um, he's given... Um, Oh, he sorted the turkey out and now he's moving on to the next bit. Shaving was not an easy task, for his hand continued to shake very much, and shaving requires attention, even when you don't dance while you're at it. But if he had cut the end of his nose off, he would have put a piece of sticking plaster over it and been quite satisfied. He dressed himself all in his best, and at last he got out into the streets, and the people were by this time pouring forth, 
as he had seen them with the ghost of Christmas present. Now here we see him being very carefree um, and he's sort of dancing as he gets ready, which reminds us of Fezziwig's party. Um, and actually this is a little note to add to this bit here about paid and chuckle. Um, he's now happy and generous rather than miserable and miserly. So those um, descriptive words there for um, Scrooge just illustrating his change. The people by this time pouring forth as he had seen them with the ghost of Christmas present and walking with his hands behind him, Scrooge regarded everyone with a delighted smile. He looked so irresistibly pleasant in a word that three or four good-humoured fellows said, Good morning, sir, and Merry Christmas to you. And Scrooge said often afterwards that of all the blithe sounds he had ever heard, those were the blithest in his ears. So blithe means happy, essentially. But what we're seeing here is a real strong contrast to page three where everybody avoids him. And he's so happy that people are saying, um, Good morning, sir, and Merry Christmas. Um, so we've got this sense, um, sense of inclusion rather than him being an outsider um, and feeling welcomed. So I guess the other thing we could say here is that it's, he, he has a sense of belonging. He feels like he belongs. Okay. He had not gone far when coming on towards him, he beheld the portly gentleman who had walked into the counting house the day before and said, Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. It sent a pang across his heart to think how this old gentleman would look upon him when they met, for he knew what path lay straight before him and he took it. So here we see a sense of guilt and regret and his shame at his former self, what he was like before. But just note here, this is the third thing that's going to have happened. So he wakes up in his bedroom and he gives a, sends a turkey to the Cratchits and now he meets one of the portly gentlemen. Um, my dear sir, said Scrooge, quickening his pace and taking the old gentleman by both his hands, how do you do? I hope you succeeded yesterday. It was very kind of you. A Merry Christmas to you, sir. Mr. Scrooge? Yes, said Scrooge. That is my name, and I fear it may not be pleasant to you. Allow me to ask your pardon, and will you have the goodness? Here, Scrooge whispered in his ear. Lord, bless me, cried the gentleman, as if his breath were taken away. My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? If you please, said Scrooge, not a farthing less. A great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. Will you do me that favour? My dear sir, said the other, shaking hands with him, I do not know what to say to such munific... Do not say anything, please, retorted Scrooge. Come and see me. Will you come and see me? Um, I will, cried the old gentleman, and it was clear he meant to do it. Thank ye, said Scrooge. I am much obliged to you. I thank you fifty times. Bless you. So here we see a real joy in giving um, on Scrooge's part, and also this kind of um, shock from the portly gentleman that... Um, he can't believe the change that has taken um, over Scrooge. It's obviously a large sum of money, and that's what we're led to believe as the reader that he's given him. So just section that bit off as well, because that's um, another important vignette to remember another scene that we get um, on Christmas Day. And then in the next video, we'll look at um, the next bit where he goes to Fred's house.